everyone, welcome to the SBK betting podcast and it's a bit of a case of deja vu really as the big freeze has engulfed the country here and over in Ireland again and uh, which means we're without National Hunt Racing uh, over the last couple of days and looking ahead to the weekend as well. We're recording this uh, at around midday on Thursday and it's pretty much likely that we're not going to have Ascot. They're inspecting a little later on. Haydock's looking very vulnerable as well. And the Irish racing doesn't look too good either. So we're without all of our turf jump act action, which, to be honest, I think is probably a bit of a relief. I'm still pining after watching the Lanzarote hurdle and seeing my selection red risk um, at 25 to 1 being pipped on the line by another skeleton horse. Um, I'm just sort of struggling with National Heart Racing after that. So we will focus on the Lingfield action that we have, which is all weather. And we're pretty certain that unlike last time when we did an all weather special and it all got scrapped because it was even too cold for all weather, which kind of is beside the point, really, when you have all that weather action. Uh, we think that the, the race meeting will survive um, for this weekend, which is meant to be part of the Winter Million series. But uh, at least the flat action can uh take part. Um, TC, before we start with the Winter Oaks trial, which we're going to look at, in total, and I know you're a massive advocate for this race, for this um, type of racing, but it's like really competitive action. Ryan Moore's back and we've got some really nice, nice handicaps in store. Yeah, it's a really good uh, Saturday of racing at Lingfield, as you say. Uh, lots of leading jockeys there, Ryan Moore being one, James Doyle being another. Lots of new market trainers also sending their horses down to Lingfield. The, the Winter Oaks, which we'll get stuck into uh, in a second, is worth £100,000. So this is good racing. This isn't just, you know, we need to find a race for the podcast. This is a very good race that we're covering. Yeah, it might not have the depth, but we'll get into that uh, in a bit. There are a couple of very classy performers in there. Yeah, there certainly is. Um, and as you say, the Winter Oaks trial at one thirty-seven on Saturday. Uh, Winter Oaks, excuse me, is the race that we're going to feature in. I talk about the Win Winter Oaks trial um, because that's a key race from pre-Christmas. And Al Agalia for Simon Ed Christopher, James Dool on board, really took a advantage of her handicap mark to bolt up and beat another rival and making me do it. And TC, I sent um, you the race in our WhatsApp group afterwards and asked, what is this? And your response was, an absolute beast. And yeah. she's, <laughs> she's got a massive 11 pound hike. This is Al Galia. Um, is she worth a bit more now up, up into what is the Winter Oaks itself? Yeah, I think she wins this race. £11 seems lenient given how she won the Oaks trial. Uh, that day, Luke Morris was on board and he barely had to press the button. She quickened around the outside three wide coming around the home bend, moved to the front effortless, effortlessly and didn't have to be uh, pushed out for a success. She just won as she liked. £11 hike on that basis seems lenient. I was expecting a stone or maybe even more. Um, and the fact that the runner up making me do it has been given one pound hike as well. Yes, mm. there's a 10 pound swing there in the weights, but at the same time, the visual impression that Alagela uh, provided that day just suggests that this form is going to be confirmed. Now let's talk about how this race is going to pan out because by watching the, the Oaks trial, winter Oaks trial, uh, Alagela could do with a lead early on and making me do it definitely needs uh, a fast gallop to have a chance of winning this race. Fortunately, making me do its uh, trainer, Harry Eustace, has put in what appears to be a pacemaker uh, in Atta Pinch, who's been running over hurdles, has stamina for further. Um, but when Atta Pinch has been running on the flat, which was oh, 450 plus days ago, uh, she was keen. She would go to the front and make the speed. So it looks like she's going to be the front runner in here. The flying ginger can also go forward, which suggests there's going to be a decent end to end gallop. And that will suit both of the two market protagonists. We don't have prices right now, but I would presume Alagayla is going to be a reasonably short price favorite, making me do it second favorite. Um, so the fact that there's two front runners will suit making me do it. That horse then has to be considered. Uh, she would probably be my second choice in the race. She's posted RPRs of 104 on both of her last two efforts, both over course and distance. And last time out, she probably wasn't given the best ride and she was briefly stopped as Alagayla made her move around the bend, making me do it had to wedge in between two horses about four or five lengths further down the field. So she didn't get an ideal run. Her mark of 99 seems workable, but this Alagayla just could be different gravy. Um, 
Simon Crisford, Simon and Ed Crisford, they're very good with their all-weather horses. And you touched on that podcast that we we were supposedly going to do a few weeks back when we were covering the all-weather special and Lingfield was supposed to be running and it was cooled off. Or was it Wolverhampton? It was one of the two. Um, and the Crisfords had the favourite that day in Algiers. The race didn't go ahead. Algiers got sent to Maidan and won very impressively. They get their horses ready for the winter. Uh, and Crisford, after the Winter Oaks trial, Simon Crisford said... She was going through a growing stage in the summer and never really put it together. But this autumn, she's really started to blossom. She's beginning to fill her frame and show us what we believe she could do. Back in the spring, she showed plenty of ability in our work. So we'll see where this takes us. Uh, that was with an interview with Racing Post. Um, that suggests they believe this horse is well capable of performing uh, enlisted and maybe group level in time. James Dawes come back from Maidan to ride. He's got 42% strike rate in the last two weeks. Her draw install two is perfect. I don't really see a negative for Alagayla. And although she's going to be a short price, she's definitely my selection in the race. Yeah, look, I what, what I saw visually the last time, yes, she had plenty of weight in hand, but she's clearly improving, as you say. Nice quote there from Simon Crisford. Her dam, Le Mort de Mavie, was really useful, wasn't she? And she got better. She got older. She was a really strong traveling type. I think she... she Bleak the likes of Flotilla. She was second at Royal Ascot. She, I just, her running style was uh, very nearly akin to this filly, and um, I think she might have produced quite a nice one. Um, uh, uh, and this is just the second uh, fall from her um, her produce already. So yeah, I would be I'd be with you there with Al Agalia. I find it difficult to, uh, to to really put a case against her. Just a quick word I'd like to get because you've obviously got so much knowledge about these all weather horses. Purple Ribbon. Um, Brings a different kind of level of form into it because the run against Bellocchio last time out um, was pretty decent. She was a big price that day, but she had Barksha Rocco behind her who's gone on to, to win and looked set for the likes of Saudi. So she'd be running to back against her own sets, even though she has to give weight away. She could prove a dangerous challenge. Yeah, she could. She's top weight in here, but she hasn't run for a couple months. And prior to that, she hadn't run since August. So she's a horse that tends to need, I don't know whether she needs a break between her races or if she's just quite fragile. Um, maybe she's had injuries in the past. In uh, her first season, her, I think when she was what, two or three, maybe, uh, she beat a horse called Gal Wonder, who's subsequently gone over to Canada uh, racing for a trainer called Josie Carroll, who's one of the best at Woodbine. And Gal Wonder's performed to a high level. So that form looks r- pretty reasonable. And Bellocchio is a course specialist around Kempton. David Monuizier has done exceptionally well to get that horse back uh, this winter. So Purple Ribbon's definitely a player. The two negatives I have against uh, the top weight in here, not only does she have to give a lot of weight away, uh, almost a stone to Alagayla. But also she's a deep closer. She comes from out the back. She will need them to go hard early and she's going to have to run down uh, the Simon and Ed Crisford trained favourite. And I don't know if that's really going to be a possibility given how impressive uh, that horse was last time out. To make up three, four, maybe even five lengths on her is going to uh, require a serious turn of foot. And I'm not sure that Purple Ribbon has that uh, in her arsenal. Okay, yeah, um, I think that's a, a fair enough assessment of the nearest rival, but based on ratings as well, um, make, making me do it um, is a a horse that you know you've got to got to respect for Harry Eustace, and I know Ross um, is a horse that you followed uh, for some time as well. Um, she she's got you know good enough credentials, but she probably is just highly ha- weighted at this stage. How do you assess this race? I think TC's nailed it. To be honest, I mean, I think. Not often you say Luke Morris looks like Jamie Spencer, but he certainly did uh, the last yeah. time. Um, <laughs> Good impression. Making me, making me do it was certainly not helped by a slow pace, and she was settled much further back than Alagayla was. So there's reason to think in a, in a more truly run race, she might get closer, as with the weight change. But Alagayla didn't win that race because she was positioned better. She won that race because she was just miles better. Um, so I think she's the most likely winner. Um, I think Teezy's right. I think at a pinch is going to take them along. She's interesting. You know, she's she's won a hurdle. She won't stop. Um, was initially given a rating of 87. That's down to a mark now of 80, having run poorly at Lingfield, where she didn't appear to handle the track. If sort of more robust nature of, of jumps racing has just helped sort her head out a little bit. You know, a mark of 80, she, she's not going to be stopping. She might just hold on for a place. So she interested me at an, at an each way price if, if that price is big enough when we get prices later today or tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's Alagayla to be making me do it. 
Yeah, I, I think that's fair enough. The dead eight runners makes it a worthy enough each way kind of betting race. And um, if um, at a pinch is being used as that pace angle, as you'd imagine the Eustace team has put her in there, she could just, uh, as you say, hold on. Um, but in a race where I think we're all quite in agreement that this uh, Simon Ed Crisford, daughter of Lope de Vega, um, and there are several in here, um, both at a pinch and Morgan Ferry, both daughters of, of Lope de Vega, just could be a cut above the rest and might be into pattern company should uh, she be successful. Um, okay, that's the Winter Oaks, which is the the, the race that we're, uh, we're we're focusing on. But as um, TC touched on at the top of this, this is a really solid um, race meeting in general. We've got it's eight races over the course of the Saturday. We've got Ryan Moore in action. He's got four rides for George Bowie, a man that's just flying. He's getting his horses. He's managed to get his horses so well handicapped. I mean, I think it's a bit of a discussion of Twitter at the moment, like how how the handicappers miss some of these, or you know, he's, he's sort of a, a slightly um, a newer version of Sir Mark Prescott with with running his horses over uh, different trips at, at coming out of novice company, but he's also improving horses from different yards. Parasites being one of them who's running. Um, and also you've got Billy Lochnan, the, the bright young talent um, who is going through his uh, claim. He might go through his claim quite quickly if they're not careful, but they're still very happy to let him roll. And he's got plenty of rides over the course of the Saturday. So yeah, there's, there's a good amount to uh, keep our eyes out on. Um, TC, is there anything that stands out for you from a, that you want to, you want to nap for Saturday? Yeah, there is. There's a horse called Marion's Boy who runs in the 102 at Lingfield. Now a nap usually is a win selection. However, this is an each way nap just purely uh, because I don't like the draw in gate 12. Um, this race is run over a mile two furlongs at Lingfield and over that trip the the run up to the first bend is very short so if you're drawn wide then it can be a huge disadvantage which is why it's an each way nap but saying that I think Marin's boy has all the credentials to run a great race I just need David Probert to, to move across and just be one off the rail because if he's three or four wide we're in serious trouble early on however the reasons why I fancy him Firstly, you're going to get a good price not only is he drawn wide but his form figures uh, isn't uh, aren't overly inspiring. Um, and his profile wouldn't necessarily attract you to Marion's Boy when you have other horses in the race like Dream Harder, who's seeking a four-timer. You've got Paris Lights in there for Ryan Moore and George Bowie. There are a couple of others as well. Obsidian Knight, who ran really well uh, 14 days ago and is a course and distance winner. However, you've got to add in the fact that some of these unexposed and improving types have been running against much weaker opposition over this winter. Yes, they've been racking up successes, much like Dream Harder. But at the same time, if you put any of those horses that he's been beating into this race they wouldn't even contest the finish so marion's boy has the class i'm anticipating a double figure price he was around seven to one on my book so i think that's good value he's had he had an exceptional winter on the all weather at lingfield last uh, last year won three times from seven races placed on three other occasions but that meant that his mark rose from 64 all the way up to 80 now he's paid for that since but roger teal's done incredibly well to try and get him better handicapped by by running him over a mile and a half on his last two starts he just doesn't stay that trip a mile three is definitely his limit uh, but now he drops back to his ideal distance of a mile and a quarter um he ran in this race last year actually and finished a good second off three pound higher four pound higher sorry now he returns better handicapped better jockey booking david probert takes the ride a plus jockey booking and it's folly to forget that this horse has the ability to win this race. And I know plenty of people are just going to write him off because of the negative of the draw. But this horse has a great chance. Mary's boy in the 102 at Lingfield. OK, um, that's a good competitive race that there were several that I liked um, in, in that as well. Um, I was going to put up a selection that but when I saw that you you had one, I, I thought <laughs> I'd uh, best to choose differently. Um, I have... Um, I looked at all of George Bowie's runners, the four of them. Um, you could, you could, you could make a case for all the four that he's got running, especially the ones that he's got George Bowie um, jocked up for. But Pocket the Packet is the one that really um, interests me. This is the horse that when he began handicapping, um, he off he, when he in his first handicap he was rated forty five. He's now rated eighty five. And uh, just to put that into context, that first run was only a few months ago, the twenty first of October. 2022 so to make to improve a horse 40 pounds in the space of three or four months is nothing short of extraordinary in my books and he was um interesting in that the last time he ran he, he actually saddle slipped 
early on and Dan, uh, Daniel Muscat managed to still win with him with the hood on and he was still quite exuberant um, even despite the saddle slipping. Um, yes, it was probably a weaker race than to the race that he'll be running in on Saturday, which is the 12.27. Um, it was also over a furlong further. He's coming back down and trip, but he's won over this trip before. He's up against quite a, another improving sort in Hubert Stream. Um, but I think he probably um, is a horse that you, you just never know with George Bowie. He still probably has got um, a little bit more juice. I can't believe you would even think that considering where he started. But considering what he did last time, um, he's uh, he's clearly pretty useful um, and uh, sprinting trips. He's won over this course and distance before. So I'm happy to, to uh, side with him um in that race which is as i said the 12 27 at lingfield on saturday so um I'd, I'd imagine there might be a few um stat attacks um that m will revolve around this race meeting tc because we don't have a huge amount to choose from outside of it unless there's a uh, Unless there's something with the, with the, the prospect of jump racing returning, which I'm sure you're you're uh, salivating over. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I was looking for a stat attack. I mean, it's quite hard to to pick a stat attack that wasn't uh, either your selection there in pocket the packet or uh, my selection revolving around that race. But George Bowie was the stat attack, 31 percent in the mm. last two weeks, just phenomenal. Uh, January as well, 22 percent in January this year, 18 percent in December. So he's improved on his December total. Ryan Moore coming back to ride for Bowie is clearly uh, crucial. I don't know who his best uh, chance is. Maybe uh, the first horse uh, for George Bowie on Saturday, who I can't actually pronounce the name. Um, let's have a go. It is Et Etiat. Should we go for Etiat? Um, maybe he's got the best chance in in the uh, 210, but uh, in the 11.55, sorry. He's also entered on Monday in the 210, which is interesting. Um, Pocket the Packet, I do want to quickly mention on uh, that horse there. Mm. I think that's Pocket the Packet's got a phenomenal chance, not only for the, the reasons you've stated, but also there's loads of speed in that race, including Hubert Stream, who's the horse you touched on that's uh, on a four-timer for Stuart Williams at the top of the handicap. He'll go forward, so will Rocking Ends. And maybe the XO will go forward as well. And Pocket the Packet stepping back in trip will love that fast gallop early on, and he could be the one to, to fly down the outside. So I do like that pick from you. Oh, well, I don't think I've ever had that before. The XO was um, the one that I did. I, I actually had a word with John Ryan at Kempton this week in the bitter cold of um, uh, Tuesday afternoon. And he had had another winner and he was excited about getting the XO out. And he could just be unexposed. First handicap off a of mark of 80. He's clearly a, a useful horse and has done well um, after um, after a break. I, I think he had a bit of a setback after his first run. Um, and then he's uh, been good in his two runs since. So, yeah, he, yeah, it's a, it's an intriguing race so we'll see how that pans out um that is um what we all we have all we have to look at ahead of this weekend um it's uh, uh only um at, at this stage we're pretty certain that Lingfield will survive this cold spell it's slightly warmer than it was um before um Christmas time uh, the last time we had the all weather special we'd imagine our jumps racing is going to be um is is going to fall foul to the weather and the likes of the Clarence House Chase which we were expected to have on Saturday um we think we don't know Ross have you heard much have you seen if it's likely um uh, murmurings is that the the the, the trainers would be keen for it to be rescheduled to Cheltenham. Yeah, I mean, I think let's hope it gets moved to Cheltenham first and foremost. And let's hope they mm. open it up again because there's a number of trainers that perhaps haven't entered for the, you know, maybe for the fourth, fifth and sixth place prize money because of these compulsory vaccinations, the extra week might just open it up to a few more horses so we might actually end up with a more competitive race if it is moved to Cheltenham and logic prevails but then we know that with racing that isn't always the way things go yeah sometimes what, what is logic to us isn't logic to others <laughs> um but look uh, i think it's going to be a bumper day anyway because the cross-country chases which was meant to be earlier uh, in the season has been moved to the, the trials weekend we have a carrot house chase as well that adds an extra dimension it looks like if the uh, the fact that noble yates can't run in the fleur de lis because of administrative errors he might run at cheltenham so it looks like we'll have a really good all things being well that the frost has moved aside that this time next week we'll be back into our normal national hand preview for that Cheltenham weekend but for now 
Um, enjoy Link Phil. That's it from us. A reminder that new SVK customers can get £30 in free bets by betting £10. T's and C's always uh, apply. Please remember to subscribe to whichever podcast channel you listen to or get on YouTube and you can play Ross Miller Room Bingo as to where he'll be each week. <laughs> it's a new one this week for those that like to keep an eye out on um, the part, every room in his uh, palatial chateau. Um, but um, please rejoin us next week and we'll be back again and have a wonderful weekend.